We are back at the compost pile. Is it possible to make a second compost video that isn't totally boring? I think we can do it. I think we can do it. This is that pile of compost that we started in the first video. It's now just over a year old. You can see it's changing color. It's breaking down. It's getting there. It's not there yet, but it's getting there. This is 12 months of leaf compost breaking down. It looked like this pile one year ago. This is our current pile that's only a couple weeks old. Winter's coming and I just wanted to sort of take a shot at it on what you'd have after one year from that first video uh, of the leaf pile. It's now getting pretty close to being some workable compost. This pile actually grew uh, a lot of jack-o'-lanterns, field pumpkins. Uh, I had them growing in the leaf pile and we got a lot of, uh, we got a pretty good yield out of that. So we've got that on the video coming up. We'll show you a whole bunch of stuff. This is our current leaf pile. These are only weeks old. That is 12 months old. So in one year, the pile goes from there to there. And then a year later, you can get into the perfectly finished compost over there. So going to run through that again. I'm going to get this pile really hot. I got a lot more nitrogen this year into this pile. So We've got it hotter than ever and we're going to take some temperature readings on that and uh, just see how hot we can get this pile. It's so bright right now. Beautiful fall day. Um, the compost pile growing our jack-o'-lanterns that grew naturally from last year's compost from the Halloween pumpkin that we threw in last year. Does that make any sense? Yeah, kind of. Last year's pumpkin that I threw in grew this summer into these pumpkins. I think that makes sense. Anyway, it's probably the last day for it. We've got clear skies. It's almost October. We probably are gonna get frost here tonight. We've probably got a dozen of these pumpkins on. There's really nice ones, actually. This was that warty look, and that's exactly what I threw in the compost. Kind of cool how that happens. You know, the leaves look fantastic. Like, that's good green color. Um, you know, so that, that just means it's a healthy plant getting all the nutrients it needs somehow out of this pile of leaves here. I always find it uh, amazing that a plant can grow in this unfinished compost. Like you can see, you can see what it is on the surface. It's nothing. So the outside of your compost pile is always going to have the least amount of breakdown. Um, inside, you know, you get that moisture and uh, you know, there's, there's definitely a little bit more composting happen, happening, but it's still just a pile of leaves. I think I'm going to get the kids to come out tonight and we'll, uh, cut off the pumpkins, get them out of the frost, and uh, get them ready for Halloween. Came out in early spring and saw that the pumpkins were growing on it and said, well, I'm not going to flip the pile now. Um, we'll let the plants grow and see if I can actually get a couple pumpkins to come off of these things. So prime time is your summer time for uh, breaking down and making that compost. You have the heat, you have the moisture you can add easily here. So. Um, I didn't get any of that gain this summer. I just sort of let it sit on its own, which is going to just, it'll still break down and make compost. It's going to be just so much slower. If I would have flipped this pile every two weeks, it would have been a lot further along. So we did get that frost. Uh, the pumpkin plant's dead. Um, it's time to clean this place up. It kind of looks like a little bit of a dump around here. So I got way too much compost to deal with. I'm going to flip this pile aggressively now that the plants are done growing in it. And uh, that'll start to break down much quicker. There was very little work in that. What did I flip that pile? Maybe three or four times in the video last year. Um, but it's already, you know, I'd say it's halfway there. Uh, this will get it going again, get some air, some oxygen into that pile. Those microbes will become active again and start to break down. You don't have to go this big. Just do your small backyard pile and pitchfork or a shovel and flip it side to side every little bit. And if you don't want to flip it at all, don't flip it. It's still going to break down. So I have so much finished compost over the last four years that I want to put all of that finished compost into one pile just to make it a little bit cleaner around here. Um, we've got the four-year-old compost, the three-year-old compost, the two-year-old compost way back there. I want to put them all into one pile. They're ready to use. They're done composting. It's time to just clean them up, put them in one big pile, and I can use them now.
So some leaves started showing up. It's uh, the height of the fall season, leaves are dropping. So last year in the main compost video, I showed you the 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. That's 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen by weight. It can get a little bit complicated. It doesn't have to be, this is nature. It's going to break down anyway. So this time of year, you can look around, you know, there's not a lot of green going on here. Um, things are dying off from frost. It's hard to get your hands on some uh, green nitrogen rich plant material. So take what you can. That trick remember is the coffee that I use. Even though it's brown, it's super high in nitrogen. So the, the general rule of thumb is all other green stuff, uh, plant material, grass clippings, lawn clippings, uh, that's all high in nitrogen. But it's really hard to find this time of year. So there's a lot of leaves here. It's actually a little bit too big for me not putting any nitrogen in. This pile's just sitting here. It's pure leaves. There's no heat on it. It's not really breaking down. That pile is a giant trailer load of coffee grounds underneath all that green material that I've taken out of garden. So that's a high, high percentage of nitrogen there. And it's actually got a little bit of heat to it. It's starting to break down on its own. So the one nice thing with a balanced pile of compost is you don't get a smell off of it. This is really just high, high in nitrogen here. It's still breaking down. It'll still turn to compost, but you get this wet, gross and smelly pile. I, when I cut into it with the skid steer, I could smell it right away. There's just that distinct rotting smell. So you, you always want to have a nicely balanced compost pile for the most part with the leaves in there. When you just have greens, uh, it kind of turns to soup and it's gross. A um, lot of bacteria in here, a lot of, lot of microorganisms going to jump into that pile and, and start to really break it down. That's what I want here. But um, these high, high nitrogen piles, they give compost a bad name because they stink and they look gross. So I want to keep a lot of nitrogen for later on as more and more leaves show up. So for the amount of leaves here, a couple little scoops of nitrogen, I think we're pretty good. Um, I've got it all on top now, so I'm gonna go underneath and try to just fluff it up and, and mix that in. And then we'll come back a little bit later. We saw how hot that pile was on its own. Um, it's gonna be a lot hotter when this gets mixed in here. So I'll try to even get a temperature reading if I can off of it later. We'll let that sit, do its thing for a few days. Um, it's always good that flipping gets the oxygen into the pile too for the little microorganisms. Uh, so we got some oxygen in there, we got a lot of nitrogen in there, and uh, that should set that pile off where we start to see some heat actually come off the top of it now. So the weather's been great and that means people have been out cleaning their yards up. Uh, the best part here is I haven't done any work at all. I haven't lifted a rake and there's probably a dump truck load of leaves here. So I know we did the big video last year where, where we turned a giant pile of leaves into that compost over there. I'm not going to bore you with the same video or anything like that. I just wanted to sort of do a quicker one as we have more nitrogen this year. I think I can get this pile hotter than we did last year. I'm kind of a guy who makes things up as I go. Uh, if you're one of those people that wants to do it right by the book, uh, you know that carbon to nitrogen ratio is 30 to one for the ideal compost pile. So just pull this offline. The material's high in carbon. You have the leaves, number one, straw, wood chips, sawdust, bark, mixed paper. For the greens, the high amount of nitrogen, you've got vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, grass clippings, you know, plant material, anything that's green and has some moisture to it is going to be high in nitrogen. Um, but again, if you're like me, just take what you have, mix it up, it's all going to break down. Um, the leaves on their own have enough nitrogen. They have some nitrogen in there. They're gonna break down. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. So don't, you know, don't get freaked out by the, the quantities and the ratios and, and think it's too complicated. Just mix everything up you have and it'll work. Um, paper, that's compost too. Um, you can really put anything in there. So I'm gonna grab all my nitrogen, throw it into this pile that I have here. That's a pretty big pile early in the year. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this compost. I was just looking at how much compost I have here and it's, uh, I don't know, I kind of have more compost than one man needs, but yeah, I like making it. Maple leaves, the best, my favorite leaf. Nice and thin, they break down quick, and they're loaded with nutrients. Pile of coffee grounds gone, it was really warm, so that should heat up that pile quite a bit. I was by grabbing a coffee this morning in the trailers, half full, so I'll probably grab that sooner than later. Um, this year, like I said, I really want to just try and get this pile really hot. Last year, it didn't start out super hot, but I just want to try, see how quick we can get this pile hot, hot, hot this year. I think I can do a better job of that. So things here were looking pretty good. I had a medium-sized leaf pile and I had this 
trailer full of coffee. This is coffee grounds from a coffee shop. Um, so it was filling up every week and I was ready to mix it. And then the last week or two, people started really bringing some leaves here. This pile has gotten way too big again. So I'm not going to hit that ideal carbon to nitrogen ratio because I don't have enough nitrogen. My nitrogen source is always coffee grounds. So I'm not gonna give up hope. I'm still going to try to mix a really hot pile of compost here. Um, what I'm gonna do now is just shovel this out on top. And then in the next little while, I'm going to try to mix it all together and move the pile to the back. And hopefully that will set it off and then we'll tear that pile apart uh, with the skid steer and get into the inside and take a temperature reading and see how hot I can get this pile. You can see the heat coming out of that pile as it's already breaking itself down. So we have pretty good coverage there with the coffee. I'll get that mixed in uh, soon and see how hot we can get it. I have way too many leaves, too much carbon here, uh, but I can't complain. I didn't bring any in. I didn't rake any myself, so can't really complain. We just got to go with what we have. Coffee is a fantastic source of nitrogen. If you have that even at home uh, in your kitchen compost, throw that in the pile. Don't forget those gross kitchen scraps, always a favorite for the compost pile. So we'll get this pile mixed up, let it sit for a few days. Uh, we should start to see a lot of steam come off the top of the pile in these cold mornings. So we'll watch for that. Once I think it's at its peak heat, we'll open it up with the skid steer, get in there and try to get a temperature measurement and see just how hot it gets. Welcome to winter, it's cold. I didn't flip this pile yet. We still have the coffee lying on top, scattered all around, uh, but I'm gonna do it now. I'm just going to move the pile like 20 feet over there. It's an easy move. Take a bucket, dump it over there. We should have a lot of heat coming out of that now. We should have more heat once this gets mixed up. So we wanna add some oxygen to that by flipping. And then all my coffee, all that nitrogen is gonna get mixed into the leaves. Well, couldn't pick a worse day to do that. So windy, we lost a couple thousand leaves for sure down the road, but we have no shortage of leaves here. Um, I think you could tell, but that center pile was uh, quite warm. This pile will never freeze all winter now. We're just getting into uh, early, early winter, but it'll be constantly a heat kind of like a volcano with, with steam coming out the top. There won't be any snow on top of the pile. Um, it will hold its own heat now. So these two piles are exactly one year apart. Last year's compost, the current year's compost. This pile maybe six weeks old. This pile obviously a year and six weeks old. I'm gonna flip them both and we're gonna see the difference in uh, texture and material. This is going to have a lot of heat come off it. We should see a lot of steam today. Uh, this pile not nearly as hot as it's further down the line on the breakdown process. But let's take today, it's decent weather. Uh, we'll get the bobcat out, flip them completely upside down. So that was a hot pile of compost. Uh, that's all the coffee that we put in, it's well mixed. Uh, this is a hotter pile than we had last year. Believe it or not, all that heat is created by these billions of tiny little microorganisms. I didn't believe it myself, I had to like double check, am I gonna look like a fool saying this? But it's tiny, like beneficial bacteria and microorganisms chomping and breaking down that pile and that's where all that heat comes from and they're living things so they need food oxygen and water so we've got some moisture in there naturally but after a while that pile starts to get tight and flat um, we want to sort of give it a burst of air and that's why we you know when you flip your pile with a pitchfork or a shovel or whatever or here with a larger pitchfork um, we're really putting that oxygen into the pile to give those beneficials more you know activity and, and, and life so this will get very hot now uh, it usually sits for a few days and you can start to see the heat increase each day up until about a week I'd say is your peak so I'm going to come back next week flip this again and try to get a temperature reading in there somehow I'd love to see how warm it is inside this pile because it should get even hotter this time because we've got a better mix here again so now that we have this year's compost pile flip let's go over and grab that one-year-old compost I'm gonna get in there with the bucket flip it over here where we move this one from and see the breakdown here before freeze up I just want to see where we're at after one year of uh, this leaf compost so now with both piles flipped that gives us a very good look at what you can expect from uh, when you gather your leaves up in the autumn mix them with a little bit of nitrogen and what you'd have a year later I only flip this pile like six or seven times so not really very much work and uh, you just kind of let nature take its course and you're left with this very nice broken down material. So that is it after a year. The giant pile of leaves that we had in the first video is now 12 months along. 
it is very close to finished compost. Uh, there's definitely some larger items that have to break down, but it's closer than I thought it would be. I only flipped this pile maybe six or seven times in the last 12 months, so didn't work really hard at it, but uh, the natural breakdown always will occur for you. So I'm going to stubbornly take this right to the end to where, I, to where it's perfectly broken down compost in the spring. I'll get the camera back out. I think if we flip this one or two times quickly in the spring to wake it up, get those, uh, get some oxygen in there for the microbes, I think we'll have it. I don't know if anyone's ever taken a 400 bag pile of leaves and mixed it with 800 pounds of coffee and did the full breakdown on camera, but we're so far now, I'm just going to take it right to the end in the spring. Uh, this should be easily usable next summer. So that's only a year, really. Um, if you flipped it more often, you'd have finished compost a lot faster than I did. If you're at home doing this, obviously you're going to be at a smaller scale than a fool like me who has way too many leaves here to deal with. Um, so if you have a small compost pile, clean your yard up in the, in the autumn, just flip it a few times, go outside, get some exercise, flip it around, and, and you'll have finished compost in no time. It doesn't take that long. going to try and take a scoop out of the middle and see how much heat we have in there. I have just a little short temperature probe. Fairly cool right now. Negative 4.1 Celsius. That's uh, 24 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll see what we got for heat inside this pile. We hit about 130 degrees in this pile and that's just with the short probe. So pretty impressive, about 100 degrees warmer than the air temperature. For this time of year, that's a pretty hot pile, so quite happy with that. Hope you liked the video. We will be back in the spring to get this compost right to the finish line until it's 100% finished leaf mold compost ready to be used. So this is it, the one year anniversary of our first video's pile of leaves. That didn't make any sense.